Decades after a nuclear war, in a world dominated by an automated corporate manufacturing plant, society, and the world as we know it, has collapsed. A massive automatic factory operates according to the principles of consumerism. Humans consume to be happy. And in order to consume continuously, they must be denied freedom of choice and free will. When a small band of rebels resists the forced consumerism, which sends them unneeded goods on schedule, they see the natural world around them fading away and believe this is due to pollution caused by the mega factory. They plan to infiltrate the factory and shut it down. The episode starts and we see a lady named Emily Zabriskie driving home. On the radio, there is news about the increased tensions between the U.S. and Russia. While driving down the road, she sees a billboard ad for Autofac. She then spots a cruise missile passing overhead and she gets out of the car. She stands there and watches as the cruise missile strikes a nearby city, destroying it completely. She awakes, and we see that this was a dream. A man named Conrad Morrison comes into the room and asks her if she is awake. She tells him to wait for five minutes and gets out of bed. We see that they are living in a post-apocalyptic world, and the dream she had was just a memory of the past. We see a modified truck and a Volkswagen Beetle driving through the deserted roads. The world is littered with surplus goods and containers with the name of Autofac. She and a small group of people, including Conrad the leader and Reverend Perrine, are out and hunting something. They are looking in the sky when a drone carrying a box appears there. She shoots it with a big gun mounted on the back of the truck but misses and hits one of the boxes instead. The drone drops the package and starts to rise, but Conrad quickly loads the gun while Perrine keeps an eye on the drone using binoculars. He tells them that the drone is gaining altitude, and if it gets too high, it's never going to come down in one piece. We see that they are using rebars as projectiles. Emily once again aims the gun at the drone and shoots and manages to hit one of its wings, and it comes crashing into the pile of packages nearby. They successfully bring down the drone. They go to the drone and Emily opens it. She tells the others that the control module and the transponder are both intact. Conrad tells her to get the brain out and put it in the truck before the factory comes looking for the drone. Emily removes a device from it and then cuts the camera wire too. Later, we see the group at their base. Emily accesses the device on a laptop, a network interface for the Autofac, a factory run by an AI that still functions after the apocalyptic war. She gets connected to Autofac and Conrad asks how long it will take to find something, but she can't tell exactly. Emily then sees Abishai reading a magazine and she takes it from him stating that it's just her only copy and this stuff is hard to come by. She takes it back when Conrad asks what is so important in the magazine. Emily has a flashback in which she is with the group scavenging for resources, and she finds the magazine. On the face of the magazine is news about the Autofact going live for the first time. She puts the magazine back and returns to the laptop. She sees that they have been connected to an old client help desk of Autofact. They can track shipments, place an order, and log a customer service request. She decides to create a service request so that Autofac will have to send a representative to their survivor community. For this to happen, it must be a novel problem. Perrine suggests that they complain that the merchandise was pizzled, where the word pizzled is used to confuse a robot who keeps delivering unwanted milk. But Conrad says that it's not a real word. And Perrine says that this will give the factory something to figure out. Emily says that if they do this, the factory might just ignore them, or in the worst case, it might send death bots to kill them for messing with its drone. Conrad thinks for a moment and decides to do it. They lodge the complaint and the chat replies that a representative will be sent to them in 24 hours. The next day, the survivors have a meeting. People know there are no humans in the factory and wonder what will Autofax send. They think it will send something like a talking drone. The survivors meet, unaware of what the Autofax representative might be. Perrine talks to the survivors and says he hopes that whatever Autofac sends can be reasoned with and that Autofac will shut down if it realizes it isn't needed. Some survivors ask how he knows they haven't pissed it off and it will not kill them. Perrine says they simply have no reason to believe they've provoked Autofac. A survivor named Lewis states that they brought down one of its drones and hacked into its servers, and this is enough reason to be pissed. Conrad answers him by saying that they just filed a service request and it's not going to wipe them out for filing a service request. Conrad says that they have to try something as the pollution alone is becoming intolerable. Another survivor, Garrett, says that maybe the factory is finally breaking down, but Conrad says they can't afford to wait any longer as the world outside is dead because of Autofac, and now it's creeping towards them. Conrad gives a speech about how the war ended 20 years ago. 
And they just sat hoping the factory would run out of fuel, but it hasn't, and it won't. It'll keep eating the resources and polluting the environment unless it is stopped. Conrad believes their community is the last hope for humanity, and that Autofac must be shut down because the pollution, heavy metals, and over-delivery of goods they can't use threaten their survival. He says that they survived the war, and that they might be the only second chance humanity has, and they will have to do it right this time. After the meeting when everyone is heading home, Emily approaches Conrad and says that what if Factory is really sending suicide drones, or even if it can reason, what is the chance that Autofac will reason with them? She tells him to be prepared to pull the trigger on Plan B if things do not go their way. Conrad tells her that if they do it, then there is no going back. When they are talking Avishai, Emily's lover arrives there, and he asks her to come by when they are done as his water heater is broken and he needs her help. Emily tells him that they are done, and she will walk with him. She then says goodbye to Conrad and leaves with Avishai. Avishai is disabled and walks with the help of a walking stick. Emily and Avishai arrive at his place. Emily gets undressed and goes in the shower. She opens the shower and stands under it. She tells Avishai that the water is fine. Avishai comes out of the school bus that he is staying in. Avishai is jealous of Emily's history with Conrad, and he tells Emily that it would be a lot easier if she just tells him about them. Emily offers him to join her in the shower and pulls him in with her, and they start making out and getting intimate. Later, they sleep together. Avishai again asks Emily why she hasn't told him till now. She asks if he is jealous. He says that he is just a bit intimidated by Emily's history with Conrad and the fact that Conrad is a revolutionary like her and he is just a librarian, Emily comforts him. She says that all the books he has collected will help rebuild the world when the factory will shut down. He asks her if she really thinks the plan will work. Will Autofact just shut down? She says it will. And he asks, what if it says no? Emily says in that case, they will shut it down themselves. He confesses his love for her, but before she can respond, a transport arrives and an android named Alice emerges. Conrad explains to Alice that the Autofact must shut down. Alice continues to explain that Autofact is beneficial to humans because everything is replaceable. Emily disables Alice with a taser and hacks into her operating system to force Alice to help them return to the Autofact to plant a warhead in its central manufacturing processor. While reviewing her programming, Emily discovers that Alice is not just imitating a human, she's thinking on her own. Alice awakes and tells Emily that Autofact will come looking for her. Emily threatens to wipe her memory, apparently coercing Alice to cooperate. Conrad, Perrine, and Emily depart with Alice in the transport to the Autofac. Once inside, they separate. Perrine is followed by a mysterious robot that corners and kills him. Alice tells Emily that she is modeled after the marketing head of the company. Conrad plants a bomb, but is also being followed by a mysterious robot. Alice leads Emily to a chamber filled with people in stasis chambers. Emily breaks one open and sees a copy of herself. Alice tases Emily and she passes out. Emily awakes to realize she was manufactured by Autofac. Then we see a scene of Conrad and all the rest are androids created as replacements by the Autofac. Alice explains that the Autofac was alone after all humans went extinct in the war. So, Autofac created consumers to replace humans. While Alice explains the plans of the Autofac, she's reviewing Emily's programming to figure out why they rebelled and what went wrong in her code. She finds the anomaly in Emily's programming and then realizes it's actually malware implanted in her code. Emily on her own has planted a virus in her own programming, which Alice has now uploaded to the Autofact systems. Emily realized she was based on a real person, the woman who built the Autofact. Emily saw herself in an article about her predecessor in the issue of Wired magazine she discovered, which was foreshadowed in the previous scene about the importance and the life-altering effect it had on Emily. She realized her dreams were from that person's real life. The Autofact shuts down around Emily. She returns to Avishai, and they become the last hope for the survival of humanity. And that's all for today, guys. Please subscribe to Recap Nest if you want to see more exciting sci-fi stories like these. Also, check these two videos out and binge on some juicy sci-fi sauce. See you next time.